All right. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, you are welcome to our session number 12 of Coding with Ms. Sora. My name is Afiki Lesikwebu. For, all of, for some of you who might be joining us for the first time. So you are welcome uh, to today's session. I trust that, sorry, I trust that you are going to have a fantastic time with us. I'm sorry about that. Um, so if you um, joining us for the first time, as I said, my email address is afikile at africateengeeks.co.za where you can email me your ideas, you can email me questions, or you can email me suggestions of projects that you would like us to do. And um, I really uh, want to hear from you guys. And I hope that you guys will be sending me requests in the in the uh, well, near future. Um, our theme has been Think It, Code It. And uh, that's what we have been uh, looking at. We've been coding some of our ideas. Really, it's been my ideas um, that we have been coding, but I think we have been having fun with those ideas. I'm a teacher at Linkside High School and um, I teach CAT. Sorry about that. I teach CAT. I teach um, IT, uh, not IT, I teach CAT and digital technologies. I'm sorry about that. I don't know where my mind is scattered today. So today we are going to do same thing that we do every day. We are going to start by doing a recap of what we have, of what we did yesterday. We are going to look at today's outcomes and we will have a, a, a question session. And uh, then of course, I will encourage you guys to send me your ideas. All right, so now we are going to recap. Uh, yesterday we looked at the not block, um, how to use the not block. So we have been using before, um, if something is equal to 50 or if something is greater than 50 or if something is greater than 50 or, or if something is greater than 50. And so yesterday we looked at if something is not equal to something, then this is what we must keep doing. So if it is not equal to this, this is what we must keep on doing. So that's what we looked at yesterday. And today we are simply going to do one thing today, only one thing. Like yesterday, we are also going to do one thing today. So we are now um, going towards the end of this, uh, this, this, this series, I will call it a series. We are going towards the end of this series. At series 15, we are going to stop for a while. And so we are going towards the end and we are trying to now bring all of the, all of the things that we have been learning, we are trying to bring them all together into one. So today we are going to do something I actually quite find interesting. Um, how to make your background to move. You will remember I've been saying to you guys, we cannot make a background move um, or rather we don't have motion blocks for the background. So today we are going to learn how to make your background to move. But before we do that, we are going to log in first. All right. And um, I'm going to share my screen for uh, a, a different screen. Sorry about that. I'm so confused today. I'm so confused. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm very confused. It seems like I don't know what's going on. Okay. So there's my, there's my screen. Uh, I, I, I hope you really forgive me for my confusion. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with my brain today. So I'm going to log in and uh, I'm going to use my details to log in. And while, while it's logging in, I just want to get something out of my screen onto the side screen so I see what's going on in the chat. If you can just give me one tiny second, then I can, at least I can see what's going on in the chat section. I just want to make sure that my screen is showing on the chat. I just want to get that right and then we can start properly. 
All right. So that is about sorted. And then the next thing I want to do is to get um, everybody so that I can see your hands. All right. So yes, Nuria, the Misora has been changed to the old one. All right. Say so thank you, Karabo, that yours is working now. I'm glad to hear that. All right. So you will remember we said, oh, before we remember anything, anyone who wants to show us any of their projects that they've been working on while they were offline, anyone who says, I've been working on something and I want to show you guys what I've been working on. Is there someone who would like to share with us what they have been working on? Uh, you want to show us your screen. Going once, going twice. Okay, so no one wants to show us their screen. Okay, Celeste, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and to also share your screen. Um, hello, Shishri. Um, so you can share your screen, I've unmuted you. So please share your screen with us. I can't share because I'm not host. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Mr. Host, please make uh, Celeste uh, a co-host. Okay, now you're a co-host. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry, let me just open the file. Okay. Um, remember the 40, we did the 40 balls game yesterday. Yeah. And I did my code with it. Okay. So this is how the game works now. Oh, that's cool, man. The, the aim of the game is to make sure you don't miss any balls. Try to miss as little balls as possible. And also try not to hit any balloons. Okay. So it's pretty difficult. Yeah, I see it's much more it's much more complicated than what we had done. But that's cool. That's cool. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to see that. That's yeah, that's so cool. you just keep on going. Yeah. Now you I just... still want to stay in my code. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you want to do further? I still want to make that if the you missed if you if you hit ten balloons the game's over or if you missed um, more times then you have collected balls. Oh, okay, cool. Now what you can also try and do just to just to put some complexity to your game, you can try and yep. count how many balls of each color you have caught, and uh, that's you know how many of each color you've caught, how many of each color you have missed. Um, just to make it much more complex. But I like it. I like it. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else who would like to share um, their creation with us? No one else? Okay. Thank you very much, Celeste. Um, I appreciate your time that you shared your game with us. It looks very interesting and I'm quite happy to see that you have been working uh, privately. Not to say that other people are, have not been working. I believe that you guys have also been working. Perhaps some of you guys are shy to share with us. That's fine also. Um, it maybe you will do so in the future. All right, thank you. So let me share my screen again if I can find it. Okay. So I think I believe all of us have logged in already. So we can start now. So what I want to do before I go ahead, I want to credit the a channel um, called Hackington's. Um, this, this, the, the, this session, I've actually found it from a channel called Hackington's on YouTube. So that guy takes the credit for um, what we are going to do. I thought it was quite interesting. I had been looking at different videos of how we are going to do today's session 
Um, and I found that channel quite interesting. And I found his solution very easy. The one solution that I had had in the past for what we are going to do, it was very, very complicated. And we would possibly need more than three lessons to finish it. So credit goes to Hackington's. You can find him on YouTube. Um, he is the one who is the brainchild behind today's um, session. All right, and I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. So what we have here is a Sprite. We all know we have been working with Sprites and what we have here is the motion block. And under the motion block, there are different types of uh, blocks. And so what we are going to do is that we want, um, we want, um, um, sorry, I'm very, I've, uh, my throat is very dry, is very dry today. All right. Um, we want the, uh, the, the sprite to move. I'm so sorry. I don't know where my mind is. So if we move this sprite, it will keep moving. But if we come to backdrops, you will see that immediately uh, the backdrop um, is not going to happen for the, 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 the motion block doesn't exist for the backdrop because the backdrop doesn't move. And so that is what is happening here. The backdrop doesn't move. So what we actually want to do is to make our backdrop to move. So that's what the purpose of this game, not the game, of the purpose of this session is today. So I hope everybody has now logged in. All right. I'm going to give you five seconds to log in. And while I read the, the chat, say how we all um, not understanding Lumbala, what you are trying to say there. Maybe you are asking, are we when are we coming back again? I am not sure. Um, you will just, just keep checking uh, your emails, okay? I think you are asking when are we coming back again online? So we have the Sprite and the Sprite has motion block, but we want to have a background that is moving, all right? So what we'll do is that we will select a background and I'm going to, we could select any background of our choice, but the one background, I think this one would work. I haven't tried it. I can try, I will try it at home with a different game. Um, uh, the background that works quite nicely with today's session is these two. Well, these two could work very good, but I'm going to take this one. Um, so we are going to use this backdrop. Um, hi, just go to missora.co.za. Uh, it will bring you to this one. Okay. Um, just go to missora.co.za. It brings you to this one. Um, so we have a backdrop now. So we have a sprite and we have a backdrop. You can see if I drag on the backdrop, it doesn't move. But if I drag the sprite, it moves as I drag it along the screen. Cool. So now, I hope you have these two elements. Um, you have these two, I hope. So what we then need to do is to say, we have to go to the costumes of this backdrop. All right. We see that there is um, the white backdrop and this night city backdrop. So we have those two backdrops right there. So we are going to look at those two. We then take this backdrop here, this night city, and we drop it in over our sprite, okay? we drop it over our sprite. So we have a backdrop and we have a sprite. And you can see that this backdrop that we have 
is just a duplicate. No, sorry. This sprite now it's this this backdrop that we had has now become a sprite because we took the backdrop and copied it over to the sprite. So now if we go to backdrops for the sprite, we have these two sprites and then we have a backdrop which has now become a sprite. So that is what we have. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do I'm going to close the chat section for myself because it's distracting me. Um, if you don't have something to ask, please uh, stop the chit chatting because I'm checking there for questions that arise if there's people with issues. So please stop the chatting. Um, it's really distracting me at this point. If someone chats again, um, something that is not in uh, according to the program, I'm going to I'm going to close the chat. I'm not going to take any questions in the chat. Okay, so Haja, you've just joined us. What we are doing today is that we want to have a moving background. All along, we have been having sprites that move, but we have not used a background that, we have not seen a background that moves. You will see so that if you go to the backdrops and you go to the background, to the code, there is no motion code for the background because backgrounds don't move or backdrops don't move. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, we want to create a backdrop today that moves. So we have gone to backdrops and selected the night city backdrop <clears throat> because we want to use that. And um, we have also gone then to the backdrops and taken this backdrop and copied it over to our sprite. So we now have a sprite, another sprite, and then a backdrop. That's what we have. So what we'll do is that we are going to delete these two sprites because we are not going to need them anymore. So we delete those two sprites and, <clears throat> excuse me, we are left with one sprite that is our back is going to play the role of our backdrop so if you come back to the backdrop you can delete also this backdrop and only have the white backdrop so you can delete this one then we only have one backdrop now we only have one backdrop which is actually a sprite okay I hope I'm not being complicated. Um, so we are trying to make a backdrop to move, but because backdrops cannot move, we are going to use a sprite as a backdrop so that we make the sprite move. I hope I am making sense. If I'm making sense, please give me a thumbs up. All right. Um, so, Karabo, you have a, is that a thumbs up or a raised hand? I don't want us to get, to be lost behind. Um, no, sir, I accidentally pressed that. Okay, cool. All right, um, that's fine. Um, so, now, what we'll do, Haja, I'm going to unmute you. Yes, what is not yes. working? Yes, what is not working? It's not working when I'm trying to take the background and put it as a sprite. Okay, so what okay. you do, right? So what you do, right? Yes. You come to, please come mute, to, mute, to, mute your please mouse for now. Mute your mouse for now. Okay. Mute yourself, but not mute your mouse. All right, so you come to, okay, um, let's start again. Uh, you come to backdrops, you select a backdrop, which is Night City. I'm not going to select it again because I have it. And we had a sprite here already. So if I can redo it, let me just select any sprite. We have a sprite, a random sprite. 
we then select a backdrop. Don't worry about the backdrop that is doubled, Loppy. We'll fix that. Now you have a backdrop now and a sprite. So you have these two and your sprite has multiple costumes, right? So you have this backdrop and you have a sprite. So what I want you now, Haja, to do and everybody else um, is to go to the backdrops. Now you have a sprite here, right? You go to the backdrops now and click on backdrops. It will then take you to backdrops. For some of you, it may take you to code, but I want you to go to backdrops. Now you have this backdrop, all right? Now the reason for you, Lopi, it's doubled is because you have this, um, you, you um, okay, no, 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 wait, I'm going to answer you now. Then Haja, you take this backdrop, this one that exists under this backdrops, you copy it or you drag it and you place it over this sprite, all right? So now, if you are clicking on the sprite, it has all of these um, costumes. And at the end, it also have this sprite, which is the backdrop. And Lopi, the reason it's doubled is because we have this, we have the backdrop still there. So in order to do that, first of all, let's delete the other sprites because we don't need them. So if you have other sprites, I want you to delete them because we are not going to need them. So we delete those sprites because we don't need them, all right? Then secondly, after we've deleted those sprites because we don't need them, we go back to backdrops. Lopi, this is for you. We go to backdrops and we delete this backdrop in nightlife. So we delete it. And before we do that, I want you to take note it says here 480 by 360. So it's 480 pixels by 360, all right? So it's 480 by 360. So the width is 480. Just keep that at the back of your mind. We are going to discuss that when we need to use it. So that 480 number we are going to use. Then you delete that. And then Lopi, you will see that now it is not doubled anymore. There's only just one, which is that sprite, all right? So if you are cool, please, uh, uh, okay, don't do anything. If you are cool, don't do anything. If you are not cool, you can raise your hand. But if you are, if you are happy that yours is right, you can just don't do anything so that we don't make mistakes. All right, so now you have a sprite that used to be the backdrop. It's not the backdrop anymore. Um, you, it is now. It has now become your sprite. I hope Haja, I've answered your question, and Lopi, I hope I also answered your question. All right. So now we have the sprite, and if you come to code, it now has motion blocks because it is no longer a background. It has become a sprite. All right. So that is cool. So we have a sprite. It's no longer the backdrop it's now a sprite so it has the motion block all right so we are going to start coding this backdrop or the sprite so whenever i say this backdrop or i say this sprite i'm talking about the same thing only in this session if i say backdrop this backdrop or this sprite i'm talking about the same thing please don't um don't get confused, I'm talking about the same thing. All right, so this is what we are going to code. So we have been going, move 10 steps, or go to random position, go to this. That's what we have been doing in the past, but we are going to do our movements differently with today's game, all right? So today, what we are going to do is that um, we are going to Let's, let's do the simple things first. 
we want to illustrate our game, we are going to have another sprite. And maybe if you guys read the news, you will see that there was a hippo that we had escaped in Johannesburg. So in light of that hippo, we are going to use this bear just to celebrate the hippo breaking free. So we are going to have a bear that is moving. And instead of moving this way and that way or this way or that way or that way, we are going to have the bear just walking on the road, but it's going to walk in one place. It's not going to actually move. It is the backdrop that is going to move and it is going to make as if the bear is moving. I hope I'm not complicated. So what we are going to do, we're going to say, when I start the flag, if I'm too fast, please do let me know. Forever. Change costume. And then wait. Let's make it 0 0.5 seconds. So let's make it move. So now it's moving. Let's make it move quicker. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry, let's make it move quicker. Um, um, all right, so now our bear is moving now, all right? So we are done with the bear, so I can hide it for now. Um, I, can, I can hide it for now. Uh, Tepiso has a question. Yes, Ashley, so the backdrop moves instead of the bear. Um, as you can see, the bear is just going to move in one place, but to simulate a movement, we are going to move the backdrop as if it's going, as if it's that, that is moving. Uh, where you can do this is in games, in car games. If you have a car that is pointing up, you make the tar to move instead of the car itself. So the car just moves left to right. Okay, um, so Tsepiso doesn't have a question. That's fine, you made a mistake, that's fine. Uh, you are forgiven. So it is the backdrop that is going to move, Ashley, yes. So we now we are done with our bear and I'm going to hide him or her. I think it's a him, looks like a he. So now we are going to code the background. And to do that, we want to do a few things and I'm going to get technical again. So please give me both your ears both your eyes and silence, all right? So what we want to do is to have to say, if something happens, this is what you must do. This is what we have. So you can have that block. So we want to say, if, um, sorry, when, not if, when the code, when the, when the game starts, we want to set uh, okay, no, let's, let's put this on the side. You can leave this on the side. When the game starts, we want the backdrop to go to a position. You will remember this backdrop now is that it has a position X is one and Y is zero. So now X is minus 127, Y is minus eight. Now X is minus 106, Y is minus 141. So we know that every sprite in our screen has a position. Now it's at zero, zero. So whenever the game starts, we always want the, game, the, the sprite to start at zero, zero, which is this position we see now, okay? So it must always be at zero, zero. Then secondly, we want to create a variable that is going to um, keep the position of our sprite or our backdrop. Now you will remember that we said a variable is a placeholder. So it's just a container. It's just a container that we can keep putting things inside. So in order for us to do that, 
what we are going to do is that we are going to say to our, um, uh, we are going to create a variable, sorry. And then I'm going to explain what this variable does. If you hear any noises, it's the airport and also there's wind. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very windy uh, in PE today. So we are going to have two variables and the first variable is going to be X position. So we are going to make it X position. And the second variable is going to be Y position. Okay. Now, if you make a mistake when you are naming your variable, you can go to the variable with a mistake and say rename, and then you then click on enter. All right. So the value now of X, if you click, double click here, it's zero. If we change it, and say the value of x, you will see, you will see the x, can you see x position is 200 minus 213, but if we come to the variable and we click on it, it says x is zero. Why is that? It's because we have said, we have not um, done anything, sorry, we have not set the value of x to anything all right it is still empty at this point in time so what we'll do is that we will then say set x position when we start the game set x position to zero and y position to zero you then might be asking yourself but sir wait a minute if we are setting the X position to zero and Y position to zero, why do we have a go to X zero, Y zero, if these are already zero, zero? Then I will say to you, it's because this one tells the sprite or the background to go to this position. So if we do it this way and I say go to zero, zero, it goes there. But if I do this, it doesn't do anything, all right? What happens here, which you are going to see later, it says set the X position to zero. So inside this variable called X position, there is zero inside, there's, there's zero inside, there's the value called, there's the value zero, the number inside it is zero. Then it says set Y position to zero, put inside this container zero. So there's zero inside. Then it says, go to X equals to zero and Y equals to zero. Then it goes there, it changes. So these are two different things. So what we do now is that we say, go to the X position. And the X position is what? It is zero. So we go inside this container and say, tell me what is inside of you? it is zero and we go to this Y position and what is inside of you, it is zero. So now if I say 10, let's put 10 there and let's double click on X position. So let's double click on, 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 on this thing. You will see now it shifts because we have said go to 10. Let's make it this one 100. You see, in X position, there is 10. In Y position, there is 100. So if I double click X position, it shows me there's 10. If I double click Y position, it shows me there's 100. If I put 150 here, and I say, what is inside X position? Well, let's say, okay, let's start it. Let's start the game so that it starts there. Now, if I click, it says there's 150. So then you will see it changes the value according to what is here. So this go to X and Y position, it looks at what is inside of this place here. It takes the numbers that are written here and it replaces them here, all right? So I hope that that makes sense, all right?
So we now say, when I start the game, I, I've seen Haja, when I start the game, set the X position to zero and Y position to zero, go to, so we are now telling the sprite, go to zero and zero, all right? So if I do this, you will see now it goes back to zero, zero, all right? So next, that we, now that we have this, we have these two variables which are going to remember our, the position of our sprite or our background. These are just to remember the position of our background. We will say forever, forever what? forever change the value of X position by, let's make it minus 10 because we want the, we want the thing to go this way. So we want it to go left. So change the X position by minus 10. So what happens is that it starts, it sets them to zero. It goes to the zero position based on what is on here. Then it says forever. Then it changes the value of X position. So the first thing is that it asks, what is X position? X position is zero, okay? Then it says, whatever is an X position minus 10. So zero minus 10 equals minus 10. It goes out. It doesn't go back again there because the loop, remember the loop, it keeps repeating inside here. Then it goes out, it goes back in. It says change X position, I'm sorry. Change X position. What is X position now? X position is at minus 10. X position is at minus 10. Then it says 10 minus 10, it is going to become minus 20. It goes out, it goes back in, and it says change the X position. The X position is now minus 20. It says minus 10, it says minus 30. It goes out, change the X position to, X position is minus 30. So that is what keeps going on, all right? So that is what just keeps going on. So um, it keeps changing that position but it still doesn't do anything because all we are doing is just changing the variable, all right? We're not changing the actual position of the sprite. We are just changing the number that is inside the variable. So we are just changing the number that is inside this variable called X position. And as you can see there, it keeps changing by minus 10. All right, so I hope I'm, 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 I'm understood and I'm slow enough. If you don't understand, please just rewatch this video again. So what I'm going to do now, I've got a forever, I've got a change position. Now I want to then make the sprite to move. So I'm going to say, go to, what, where must it go? it must now go to X position and it must go to Y position. So whatever is, yeah, the last time we counted, it was minus 30. It is going to say, go to minus 30. It goes out, this changes to minus 40, go to minus 40. It goes out, changes minus 50, go to minus 50. Remember this one, it stays at zero because we never change it. We don't change it anywhere, all right? So it stays at zero. Then we say now, let's make it move. Let's say, see now it's moving now. And you can see it's moving and then it ends at the end here. So we want to then say, if, if the position of this, um, picture with the width of 480. 
if the exposition of that, if this exposition is less than 50, no, no, no. So is it is less than not 50 minus the width of the picture, which is 480. But this time we're going to say minus 480 because um, we are going to the left side. Okay. So we are going to the left side. So we are going to say minus 480. So if it was going to the opposite side, that side, we were going to say it must go uh, by 408. So if it's less than, if it's, if it's uh, greater than 480. So now if it's less than 480, which it is, we wanted to go and set X position to the other end. So it must set X position to the other end and the other end, we are going to say 480, still the width of the image. So now let's see. So it goes back and it starts again, all right? But there is still this white screen that is bothering us here. So we are going to now get rid of that white screen. So what we'll do is that we are going to duplicate this code. So now we have two sprites that look identical. And if we do this, it moves, they move uh, together. The reason that we only see one sprite is because the one is under the other one. You'll see that there it is. But when we start the thing, the, 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 the movement, because they are both at position zero, zero, see, they're both at position zero, zero. So they are, they, the one is under the other one. So that's why they appear as if they are going at the same, they're in the same place. Well, they are in the same place. Uh, they are just one, after, one is under the other one. So in order for us to do that, we will go to the one that we have just duplicated and we are going to create an X position and Y position for this sprite. Don't worry, Ashley, we are getting there. So we want to create an X and Y position for this sprite. So we are going to create a variable, go to variables. We go to make a variable. So we say X position one. So that is different from the other one. Let's see if we say X position just, you see a variable named X position already exists. So we are going to say this one is X position one. So that we know X position one is for this sprite. Then we create a Y, Y position one. All right, um, so we have these two again. Then for the second sprite, what we'll do is that we are going to change wherever you see X position, Y position, we are going to change to X position one, Y position one. So set X position one and X set Y position one. Y position one. So X position one, Y position one. And then we are going to remove these. Oh, wait. So X position, and then we are going to take X position one and Y position one. Then we come to this one, change X position one and X position, no, X position one, Y position one. Then let's delete these. Also this one, 
x position one, x position one. Then we play it. Okay, still doing the same thing, all right? Even though we have these different values. Now let's see why is it doing the same thing? It's because they are still set at zero, both of them. All right, so what we want to do is that for the second um, sprite, for the second sprite, we want the second sprite to start at 480 and not at zero. So we want it to start at 480. We want it to start there instead of starting here. So it's X must start here at the end and not at the center. So let's see now. So now they are starting. Now you see, we then have this space that we are not very cool with it. I hope, um, Ashley, I hope you can see now that is how we are repeating it. So we have them moving. Okay. Um, Haja, please make it quick. So um, what, what should I set the X position, the first character? Okay. Um, okay. Um, mute yourself. Mute yourself. Excuse me? Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Thank you. All right. So the X position for the second sprite, you set it to 480. For this sprite, you set it to zero. So you don't change it. The Y position never changes. It only stays at zero. So now I hope I answered that. So it doesn't change. Um, so now we want to get rid of this space. Um, we want to get rid of that space. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, go to, okay, if, I, if, if we go to, let's change this one. Go to costumes and in costumes, you go to vector, convert to vector. Then you click, you select the selector tool and you click on here. Now, if I drag this side, you see that this one will move closer. Um, let's also maybe convert this one to vector, then other one also, and let's move this side. Now, on this one, we drag this side. On this sprite, we are going to drag this side. Okay. Okay, now it is become one. So to make sure that this doesn't, I mean, it's going to irritate you when you look at it. Um, so you can just keep dragging this and it can, it will eventually get rid of it, you know? But for the sake of this game, um, we're not going to bother with it. Okay, but it is something that you can move. And if we then start the game, Oh, okay, the line is still there. So let's do this. So if we start the game, now we have a moving background. Okay, uh, also your, back, your other background doesn't move. It's fine. Just hold on a second. I'm going to ask you to share your screen in about two minutes. Um, because we, I just want to do one more thing and then we are done. Um, so you're not going to miss out on anything. Um, you're not going to miss out on a lot. So please just, uh, just, just, just hold on. I will help you now. So the final thing that we are going to do is that we want to make sure now if we, if we show our bear, no, sorry. If we show our bear, you will see that it doesn't show it is because it is behind these layers, these two layers. So we want to make sure that when the bear comes, these are at the back. They are always the background. They are what they are. So they are the background. Now, 
what we'll do is that we'll go to looks and okay, um, Haja, please leave your hand like that. I'm going to answer you. And then Khoto, please just raise your hand also so that I don't forget you, sir. Um, then we are going to say go in 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 looks, we are going to say go behind or go backward by 10 layers. Then we also come to the second backdrop. We say go backward by 10 layers. Okay, so now if we start the game once again, you see now our bear is moving. If we wanted to, we can then go to variables and uh, don't show them. And if we want to make it slower, if we want to make the background slower, we can change this value here and change this value here, all right? So let's do this, let's start again. So now you can see that the bear is moving, all right? So um, let me, let me sh you can share your screen now, Khoto. I'm going to start with you. Please share your screen. I'm going to unshare mine. Okay, Khoto. Khoto, are you there? Okay, when you are ready, please raise your hand again. Haja? Yes. All right, so I suppose you didn't have a question. Khoto, can I get back to you now? Are you ready, Khoto? All right, so I suppose um, I'm not sure, Khoto, what's going on with you. Haja, yes? Each time um, when I'm playing it, my back is white, and then my background, white background. So each time you play, your background is white. Say that again. It, my background, each time it, it comes to the um, night city, and then it comes, there's a space. The white space and then it's background again. Okay. Now what you do, okay. eh? now what you do, eh? please mute yourself first. Please mute yourself first. Okay. What you do is that you go to the first backdrop or first sprite. You go to costumes, and on this one you are going to click. Make sure it says convert to vector. If it says convert to bitmap, it's fine. Leave it like that. Now you say convert to vector. You then click on this button here, this selector tool. And then these, these uh, circles are going to show. Then drag, drag it to this way, all right? Then you come to this one and do the same thing, convert to vector, and then drag this side this way until that space is done away with, all right? So that's how you can get rid of that white space. Oh, oh, sorry, man, I wasn't sharing my screen. I'm so sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, so what I was saying, uh, I'm so sorry about that. So what I was saying is that um, what you go to the first sprite and you go to costumes then you make sure you convert to a vector. If it says convert to vector here, you click on convert to vector and you click on this selector tool. You then click on the, on the sprite itself. Then on this, when you've clicked on it, the first one, it's going to show you these circles. You come and drag this circle to this way. See, and then drag it this way and then you come to this one, if it's still not closing, you can then also convert to vector 
click on the select tool and then drag this side um, that way. All right. So that is how you can get rid of that white space. All right. Um, that's how you deal with that white line. Right. Then uh, someone has asked me to go to the barcode. Uh, I'll take Carabo this time first. I'll take Carabo. Yes, Carabo. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't understand how I don't understand how you I don't understand how you make it move like at the same time like both of them but separately. Okay. Um how I do that you see on the second sprite on the second one on the second backdrop right make sure yes. that the first set X position one <laughs> set to 480. Yes, sir. Yeah, before that is set to 480. Then they will move at different times. Mm. Or they will start at different positions. You see this one, it starts at position zero, which is, it starts like this. Starts yes, this sir. Way. And the second one, it'll start at the end of where this where the sprite ends, that second one is going to start. So that's what is happening. So that's why we are starting it at 480. Oh, I see. Yeah. And it's right. working now. Super. Um, Carabo, was you. Uh, Aja, I'm going to take you again. Any more questions? Anyone else? Anyone else? Haja? Sir, it's still not working. OK. Um, okay. Um, Ms. Holt, please make Ms. Haja, Holt, the, please make Haja the, the host. The host. We have three minutes remaining. And then share your screen, Haja, when you are made host, co-host. Okay, Carabo, just be ask, asking your question so long. Carabo? No, sir, I don't have a question. Okay, I'll, I'll lower your hand. That's fine. Haja? Thank you. Um, Keshav, have you been, have you come right with your code for the bear? Oh, Keshav can hear. Okay, I think Haja is sorted, so I will lower her hand. So, yes, in conclusion, what we did yesterday, um, we have looked at how to make a background move. And essentially what we looked at, um, Haja, I've seen your hand now. We have two backdrops, and uh, when one backdrop gets to the end, when one backdrop starts moving, we want a second backdrop to start to cover up that space so that they are appearing as one backdrop. And in order to do that, we have uh, created two variables, or in fact, four variables, two for each, called X position and Y position that hold the value of um, X um, for either one so that we know exactly where the X position is at any given time. And therefore we can then say, go to the value of that X position. So that's what we have done today. Um, uh, but Haja, um, please just uh, screenshot this code. I'm going to quickly screenshot it for you before uh, this session is ended. I'm not sure why you are not yet co-host. Um, so I'm going to put the code in the group, or in the chat. So download it there because we just have one minute remaining of our session before we leave, all right? So I've shared it in the chat section. I'm also going to share it. I'm going to share the second one so that you have both. 
So you have both of them. Um, where's the second one? Second one is coming. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I have shared the screenshots. Um, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our session today. I hope I'm going to see all of you guys tomorrow again. And um, Keshav, I will find out for you if we have any more sessions after the 22nd of February, and I will get back to you guys tomorrow when I find out. Um, so please guys, try and log in on time so that you can catch the sessions. Um, you can catch us when we are starting the sessions. Thank you very much.